I'd, I'd also like to thank um, SCTE and Mark and Derek for your hospitality and, and particularly uh, your passion for this industry and the continuous, continuous uh, innovation around the industry, so thank you for that. I'd also like to recognize our sponsors, uh, Paul, uh, Cisco, and, and the many other sponsors that made today possible, so thank you for being here. Um, I'd, I'd love to take credit for all the things that uh, Paul just mentioned, but it's really uh, the combination of an outstanding team. And today I'm, I want to share the story with you about Cox Conserves, some of our energy and conservation management approaches. And really it's been the vision of Jim Kennedy, our, our chairman, as well as some great thought leaders, Stephen Bradley, Steve Watkins, and many others that are here with us today that I hope we'll, you'll get to meet on the break. Cox has a long history of being a good corporate citizen. Our chairman, Jim Kennedy, introduced Cox Conserves based on that heritage and our desire to protect and sustain the environment for future generations. Since that time, we've made enormous progress and we've completed conservation projects across the map. We're focused on energy conservation, fuel cell installations, solar energy, water conservation, and many community efforts such as river cleanups and thousands of hours of volunteerism. Cox has been an environmental leader for many years. And in 2007, we created a formal program around our sustainability efforts. You know, it's hard to say when I really began this focus on the environment. I've always cared a lot about the environment. I spend a lot of time outdoors. I really appreciate that time. I just decided a little over five years ago that the company needed an environmental focus. And that was the beginning of Cox Conserves. And we decided that it was appropriate for us to set goals and objectives in the area of conservation like we do with anything else we do in business. Everything we ought to do, we ought to look at it and say, is there a en more environmentally friendly way to do that? Uh, in many cases, the best way for the environment is also the best way for business. When I think of some of the neat specific programs we've put into place through Cox Conserves, one I like the most is the deployment of new bucket trucks. We really have changed the way we think about a fleet operation from you know, just get whatever truck or whatever car works to get whatever truck or whatever car works in the most environmentally friendly way. We are reducing our carbon emissions by over 17,000 tons a year. Our water recycling programs have conserved over 20 million gallons of water. We use this new fuel cell technology where we use biogas to power fuel cells. It is really a new, innovative way to produce energy. So I hope in the next five years we can continue to find new ways to be more environmentally friendly. A key part of Cox Conserves is all of us doing a little or in our case, the company doing lots of little things. When you walk out of a room, should the light stay on or can you turn it off? How about when you leave, turn off your computer? It's just those little common acts that sometimes we're too busy to do. You know, we're hassled, we're dealing with a complex life. Take a minute to look around you and say, what can I do? And it's surprising the number of things you'll find you can do that will make a difference. In the culture of a company, it's what you do rather than what you say. And I think Cox Conserves is a very important part of the culture of our company. And that's the legacy. I want people to understand that. I want people to understand that as the environment we live in and work in is threatened, that the culture of our company is to do something, not debate. I'd like to, to go into uh, three specific sets of solutions that I've teed up earlier, uh, how we've aligned our workforce, our outreach programs, and then I'll close on operations and facilities that brings it a little bit back closer to the, the cable operations that many of us uh, support on a day-to-day -day basis. Aligning our workforce. Uh, you know, Comcast, Time Warner are, are companies that have you know, a larger workforce than, than even Cox from a, a cable perspective. Think about the, the innovation, the ideas uh, that, that come from the workforce. 
how do you harness that? How do you tap into that creativity and apply that from a business perspective? And that's really what aligning our workforce is all about. It's really about a grassroots effort uh, from our employee base, tapping in to uh, innovation and driving good results, not only for our company internally, but externally for our customers as well. Just a couple of quick examples. In Arizona, we have a program called Turning Waste into Growth. Uh, this is a, an employee-led program that uh, has recycled 625 tons of product and, and generated about $15,000 per year in terms of some of the profits from the recycling and some of the tax credits that they donate back into the <coughs> community. In Las Vegas, we have an alternative transportation program led by the employees. Uh, they're uh, accumulating about 17,000 miles of travel on a, on a yearly basis using alternative travel just in their local community. Um, and then in Rhode Island, the team has uh, initiated a multi-pronged recycling program and, and composting program uh, that has reduced waste to the landfill by about 80 percent. And in fact, uh, they were so excited about uh, their accomplishments, they put together a short uh, video just to, to put this into context and we'll, we'll hear from the employees themselves. The role of distribution center is to support our whole operation, basically. Everything starts here. We go through about 11,000 pieces of equipment in here per month that cycle through here, about a half a million pieces a year. So we have every opportunity to create a lot of waste. All the equipment and material used to do installations with our customers initiates here. Converters come back from our customers. They're all scratched up, and uh, we end up replacing a lot of pots. A lot of those pots are metal, aluminum, plastic. We test it. If we find something wrong with it, and we can't fix it here, we send it out to a repair vendor. And then once it gets back from the repair vendor, we'll reissue it to a customer, so we're reusing the equipment. Pretty much we recycle everything. We also are able to capture aluminum, steel, wood, lead-acid batteries that, that are going to the right places. We estimate that over the past year, we've diverted at least 200 plus tons of material from the central landfill. The last I looked, there was 64,000 pieces of customer premise equipment that we pulled out of the field in our customer homes that were not deemed redeployable and that we ended up selling for scrap. The money that we made, whether it's through our desk side recycling program, the switch now to reusable cups, or participating in the cafeteria's composting program. We've been able to reduce our waste stream to the landfill through recycling and composting by 80%. Within the cafeteria itself, during the meal prep, the staff here has been charged to separate all of their food wastes along with recyclables and then trash. So what used to go down the drain out to a grease pit now gets captured, which will end up in the compost facility and end up actually as compost coming back to our gardens. Sodexo has been a great business partner. They provided all the plates and the bowls and the trays that are 100% compostable. The company has also managed to save money by doing this. At the 9JP facility alone, we've reduced our energy bill by over 30% in the last year. The boiler that was in here was about the size of a service van, one of our typical Cox um, communication service vans. So from a service van boiler, to two basically the size of ATM machines. We're transitioning to a hybrid fleet uh, where we can because it has several impacts on the environment. One of them is 30 percent fuel savings on average per unit. We do reduce the carbon emissions and the greenhouse gases anywhere from 11 to 16 tons per unit. This truck compared to our standard diesel vehicles usually refills with fuel half the time. We estimate that the hybrids will save approximately 400 gallons per year for each unit we uh, deploy in our fleet. Driving this vehicle around other people see it, other people know that uh, Cox Communications is, is conserving energy. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road, um, the conservation effort where the food and waste and trays and cups that we have in our cafeteria actually come back and turn into something that's just beautiful for the garden. So when you're finished your meal in the cafeteria and you go and throw away your waste, think about this location as what you're contributing to. And the, the third section I want to focus on uh, within our solutions is really around our operations and this starts to bring it a little bit closer uh, to, to the day-to-day -day cable operations that uh, many of us operate in. We've recently opened a, a new facility just about uh, 10 miles from here called Cox Technology, uh, CTEC for short, 
and it hosts the technology, network operations, and engineering team uh, in Atlanta for the Cox operations team. And what's new, what's new and different about this uh, facility, it's about a 650,000 square foot facility, LEED certification uh, at the highest ranking, and we've really done some great things on the design to actually exceed our energy reduction targets by over 15% in terms of the best in class reduction activities. We've put in parking spaces for fuel efficient vehicles. We've put in solar panels in the parking lot, driving a lot of uh, additional energy. And we've also mitigated our water use uh, with low, low flow fixtures and reducing our water use on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's really a, a wonderful facility. During the building process, we were able to recycle over 95% of the materials that were part of the construction of the building. <coughs> and on a daily basis, we're able to compost over 98% of uh, the waste that comes through the facility on a day-to-day -day basis and, and return that back to uh, uh, gardens and things of that nature. So it's a really uh, a great testament from the Cox family to be able to, uh, to put in a facility like that. But from a day-to-day -day perspective, having all of the technology uh, employees in a on campus in the same facility, the collaboration, the communication, the productivity uh, around the workforce has also been uh, extremely significant uh, improvement over the years. Um, so we're very excited about uh, that particular facility and would like to welcome you to visit anytime. Um, you heard about this in the, the opening video. Uh, we've also been focusing on investing in our eco-friendly fleet. Uh, in fact, we were recognized recently for having you know, one, one of the top 50 green fleets. One of the important stats uh, that we'd like to share is that 90% of our network operations vehicles utilize a new hybrid operating system that uh, really emanates zero emissions during aerial operations. And so that's a step in the right direction. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, the end all game, but we're also adding additional hybrid fleets to our operation and trying to drive down the emissions overall. And we've also equipped, and I'm sure many of you have as well, equipped our fleet with uh, state-of-the-art GPS systems. And that's really helping us uh, do a lot of great things like uh, a million gallons in fuel savings per year and about 25 million pounds of CO2 reduction, and then also an 84% improvement based on reducing the vehicle idle time. So some really great benefits from fleet management. I know there's a section today around fleet management. I'm sure those other great examples uh, that we'll hear about from other companies today. Water conservation is, is a key part of our overall program. Our Mannheim operations uh, uses a lot of water, particularly around uh, the, the vehicle line of our business. We have a facility here in Atlanta, and over on an annual basis, we're able to uh, conserve about 20 million gallons of water a year through our water conservation facilities. And an important stat is about 60% of that water that comes to the facility is returned in a cleaner state than initially uh, found upon use. So really giving back and recycling the water and conserving. We've also had some employee-led programs, uh, particularly out in California. Uh, folks stepped up to the 20 gallon a day uh, savings challenge. We had about 800 employees participate, and that equates to about 6 million gallons of water uh, conserved on an annual basis just through that employee led initiative. So, just those two examples alone, about 26 million gallons of conservation of water, and I'm sure there are many more examples uh, that folks are putting into motion. But pretty, pretty impressive. Fuel cells, uh, Mark talked about this in some of his opening comments. Uh, we've invested a lot in fuel cells, particularly in the state of California, uh, using biogas, and in particular methane gas, that's produced from our, the breakdown of our organic compounds in our landfills, so recycling uh, that gas to uh, dry the fuel cells. In fact, about 25% of our electricity in California comes from these particular cells, and uh, we're looking to expand that in the years to come. Solar energy, I referred to this a second ago. Uh, we've done a lot to invest in solar energy. Uh, we've got uh, installations in Arizona, California, Georgia, Maryland, New Jersey, Oregon, Tennessee, and others. And we've actually installed a freestanding canopy uh, recently in the, the Cox Enterprise parking lot, just a few miles from here, that, that generates about 140,000 kilowatts hour of energy uh, per year, and, and also doubles as uh, providing a little bit of shade on a hot uh, Atlanta day for the parking lot as well. So some creative uses of new technology, but also practical applications as well. 
The, the next example, you may be scratching your head, what does this have to do uh, with conservation? Uh, telepresence really helps collaborate and communicate, and uh, you know, one of our partners here today is uh, you know, the power behind our, our particular telepresence unit. But we've equated that this saves us about 3,000 tons of carbon a year based on the travel that's mitigated uh, by using telepresence as opposed to actually making the face-to-face -face visit. So we've really tried to leverage this technology to, uh, to improve communications, of course, uh, but also try to mitigate some of the, the carbon footprint. And uh, another, another favorite, uh, many of you have uh, participated in the set-top box uh, energy management initiatives, and there are many more on the radar. This, this one uh, hits, hits pretty close to home, but if you really look at uh, what, what you and we with our partners and providers <coughs> and uh, with SCTE, Cable Labs, and other NCTA, we've made a lot of good headway over the years. If you look at the, this chart here, it's the energy uh, consumption and reduction from 2002 to 2011. If, if you look at the, uh, the DVRs, the set-top boxes, it's about a 35 to 50 percent decrease uh, in terms of the energy consumption over the last 10 years. And there's much more to do. In fact, many of us are working uh, very diligently on further improvements. But if you compare that to, uh, you know, refrigerators and other appliances that sometimes we get unfairly uh, characterized against. We've really made some good improvement, but there's much more to do going forward. And, and as you know, uh, many of you are um, right in the middle of this particular initiative, but uh, we've, many of us have signed up for a voluntary agreement that covers about 90 million American households and about 90% of our pay TV consumers to lower our, our energy consumption on our set-top boxes. Things such as introducing light sleep cable mode, uh, which can reduce energy by more than 20%, so really powering down in a light sleep mode on the set-top box. Deploying Energy Star uh, set-top boxes, so the new Energy Star standards, so many of us are, are, those are the predominant part of our lineup in terms of set-top boxes going forward. And then also many of us are participating in deep sleep trials um, by, the, by the end of December 2014, where we can really drive the energy consumption putting the set-top boxes in, in sleep mode when they're not in use. So some real great thinking, uh, application of technology, standards, alignment with our vendors, our partners, and, and really driving great benefit for our, our consumers as well as uh, the industry broadly. So great work by folks there. So uh, just to start to kind of wrap up some of the, the key takeaways here, um, I know I gave you a lot of examples, and many of you are working on these programs as well, but I think at least uh, I, I feel honored to be a part of the Cox Conserves program and, and benefit from the work that others have done. But it's really a comprehensive program aligning with our employees, our communities, our partners, our vendors, our peers, and then also you know, driving great operational improvement on the day-to-day -day operations, uh, saving, saving energy, reducing waste, and also making other improvements from a value chain perspective. But I think, and I, I think you'll hear this from uh, our, our next guest, Joel Babbitt, but I think couple of takeaways. Uh, good for the environment and good for the bottom line are not mutually exclusive. You can drive great financial business results by doing the right things from an energy and conservation management program. And to truly be sustainable, you have to have sustainable results. And I think that's a, a key tenet of our program. And it has to make sense economically as well as uh, from a conservation standpoint. Uh, building partnerships, enabling folks, whether it's your employees, whether it's your customers, your communities, has is, is been key, and hopefully you saw that with some of the examples that are shared in terms of the Cox Conserves Heroes and the partnerships that we have in our community. And then be creative. Uh, this is a very creative bunch uh, in the crowd here with all the technology, the standards, the innovation that we're driving across the industry. How do we drive new technologies to get even better results going forward and apply standards and apply a next generation thinking in our IP networks to continue to drive out even more operational efficiencies and a better customer experience for our customers with next generation products and, and services. So I think those are some of the, the key takeaways and I look forward to, to hearing more stories and lessons learned from others in the room uh, you know, throughout the day and applaud your efforts uh, in supporting the, the conservation and the energy management initiatives and I think there's much more to do. In fact, uh, while we're, we're excited about our, our 2017 goal of a 20% reduction um, and we, we're excited about some of the progress we made, we don't think it's enough. We think there's much further to go and in fact, just recently, uh, Jim Kennedy, the board of directors, um, Jimmy Hayes and others from Cox Enterprise 
said we need to do more going forward. And they set very ambitious and aggressive goals uh, for uh, the years and decades ahead. In fact, we're looking to become carbon neutral, water neutral, and waste neutral uh, in the years to come. And that sounds pretty ambitious, uh, particularly with the, the footprint we have and the operations we have. And, and to be honest, we don't have exact plans on how we're going to get there just yet. So we're working on the plans, we're taking ideas from great consortiums like SC, SCTE, other lessons learned, but really looking to be able to use alternative fuel cells, alternative energy to mitigate the carbon uh, impact, looking to recycle enough water to sustain ourselves, and also looking to have zero waste going to landfills in the future. So we've got a good head start, but there's uh, much, much further to go, and we're looking forward to achieving those goals, and we'll probably be better suited by taking great ideas and lessons learned from folks in this room as we continue to partner together. So pretty excited agenda for the Cox Conserves program. So with that, um, you know, I appreciate you taking time to listen to our story. And uh, it was really more around providing some ideas <laughs> around how we're trying to move the agenda forward. But this is really, it's not about Cox. It's about uh, the cable industry, about our communities, and about all of us trying to make a difference and improve from an energy management uh, standpoint going forward.